As you'd expect, that story dominating all of the coverage around Australia tonight. Uh, the Daily Telegraph, the Sydney Morning Herald, mm. The Age, a very powerful front page from the West Australian as well. Uh, but it's the Australian newspaper that will land on first and the headline there, Virus Strikes. The first Aussie dies and the photo there of Australian virus victim James Kwan, who's 78, uh, the first Australian victim of this virus. Uh, Troy, if I could start with you, the, 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 the virus is, we're being told that it is no more um, aggressive or virulent than SARS, but we know that it's spreading in a completely different way and it may not be so much the veracity of this virus, but its ability to spread and mutate. We're talking about something essentially that we don't really understand, aren't we? Yeah, I think that's right, Gemma, and it's interesting that front page of The Australian there uh, names um, the first Australian casualty and pictures him. Some of the other papers don't. Um, but look, you're right, we don't know where this is going to go, so there are huge um, heightened nerves and anxiety that goes not only to the budget surplus, which has been mentioned uh, in Trudy's package there, but how we manage uh, the spread of this disease. 87,000 cases mm. now globally, around 3,000 people have uh, died as a result of it. So how, how we contain the spread of it, how we manage it, if it does uh, have a, if we do have quite a significant outbreak here, there's the economic repercussions, not only the budget surplus, as I mentioned, but also financial markets. And so yeah. some of the other papers I'm sure you'll get yeah, to we'll are get focusing to nice. yeah. on that as well, uh, where we've seen seen international uh, stock markets tumble um, and huge concern now coming out of China as, as their manufacturing uh, has been massively scaled back um, and that is going to have flow-on effects uh, around the world, especially here. Yeah, Christy, I mean, this on this show last Sunday night we were talking about uh, has the tide turned? There, was, there were several stories that pointed to the fact that the infection rate had in fact mm. slowed. We thought maybe we might be seeing the back end of it or at least this, the beginning of the back end of it, but it seems not to be the case. Let's talk for a minute about these travel bans. Um, it, 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 the, the government is damned if it does and damned if it doesn't. Uh, we've got friends in Italy who are bleeding, they're in tourism and they are also bleeding dry the same way Australian tourism has been hit, the same way Australian education has been hit and what they're saying is uh, there are, you know, life is going on, life is essentially as normal and I guess you would look around a city like Sydney, the only thing I've noticed different is there is a an absolute um, plethora of, of Aquium and similar branded uh, Hand sanitizers literally everywhere you go, every shop, every hotel, every eatery has got that. And so that's, to me, the biggest visual apart from the, the masks. But coming back to this idea of travel bans, you know, from a policy perspective, is that responsible? Is it knee-jerk or is it just, has, you know, better the devil we do than don't? I think from a policy perspective, it is entirely responsible. Uh, we know this week in Canberra, the government convened uh, the National Security Committee. That committee, the NSC, is convened uh, with members of the Cabinet and uh, senior public servants who advise on international issues of security, including uh, international health issues that affect Australia's security. Uh, the WHO has not declared... Uh, uh, coronavirus a global pandemic as yet but the Australian government is operating as if it is one uh, and that includes uh, advice from Department of Home Affairs and Border Force to invoke travel bans uh, and of course uh, people are asking why is there a travel ban in uh, only for visitors from Iran, mm. Iran and not other countries uh, and of course Peter Dutton's made the point this morning that uh, Iran has uh, shall we say a dubious history uh, of reporting statistics to international authorities in terms of health uh, and among brand, others, may, among others, may we say. Uh, and of course, uh, certainly uh, their own health minister came down the day after uh, he made a, an announcement saying that they had contracted coronavirus in Iran. Uh, and of course, the Iranian health system uh, is perhaps not uh, as known to be as on par uh, with Australians is perhaps Italian and uh, South Korean health authorities. Such complexity, Scott. The story goes on to talk about the consideration being given to the first coronavirus clinic being set up in the Gold Coast. How has that been received? Oh, look, uh, 
always you'll see concerns being raised from locals when that occurs. Um, in the same way we saw when uh, even from locals at Howard Springs in the Northern Territory, mm, when, there was a, right. when we were bringing potential uh, contaminated victims there as well. And uh, even on uh, Christmas Island, if you remember, some of the locals were concerned yep. then. There's yes. always going to be those concerns. But look, the reality here is I think the government will be condemned if it's not seen to acting strongly if something goes wrong. Um, mm. At the moment, I think there's a lot of fear and concern out there. Whether founded or not, there is concern out there and it can only be for the Morrison government to make sure it's being seen to be ahead of the game and acting strongly on this. I think the Morrison government was, was vindicated in some, some of its earlier decisions by when the, when the World Health Organisation wasn't saying that this is as bad as it has become, it went ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only at the moment politically advantageous for it to be being seen to be very strong, very clear, and uh, maybe you know reacting very, very clearly in terms of this, uh, it would be condemned if it had been seen as going soft on this, and then the crisis gets even worse. You, you're quite right. Uh, it's, it's remarkable even to just hear snippets of passing conversation as you're walking around the city, people talking about it. Someone you know, today sneezed and I heard someone joke about, oh, no, I'm not infected, I've just got hay fever. And it, it is remarkable mm. to see how quickly that has sort of taken place.